Hallelujah. Woo. Good to be home. Good to be with all those in Livingston campus and all the other campuses here at Bethany. And I'm so thrilled to be here this morning with all of you. God's good, don't you think? Amen. Why don't you open your Bibles to the book of Genesis, chapter 1. Get your Bible apps, whatever it is you use now, your technology. But uh, we'll jump over there in just a moment. I'm going to be speaking the, this morning on men and women. How many men are in the house? Boy, that's bad. How many women are in the house? Oh, man. You're going to need this message, men. <laughs> Valentine's weekend. Amen. You know, I heard about Boudreaux and Clotilde have been married 50 years, and somebody asked Boudreaux, said, how was it that you've been married for 50 years? He said, when we first got married, he said, uh, we were coming out of the church house, and Clotilde had her carriage and her mule waiting for us, and we got in the carriage, and she slapped those reins on the back of the mule, and the mule took one step and stopped. And she jumped out, and I mean, read the riot act to that mule, got right in that mule's face and got back in the carriage, slapped the reins again. The mule took one step and stopped. She got out, called that mule every name you can imagine. Boudreaux's sitting there just watching. She gets back in there, slaps the reins again. That mule takes one more step. She's, that's it. She gets out, pulls a gun out of her purse, shoots the mule dead. Boudreaux says, Cotill, you can't do that. She said, well, that's one. All right, I'm sure you'll figure that out. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want to talk a little bit about men and women. They're different. Isn't that right? Men, they sound different. Women sound different. We do different kinds of things. We argue and fight differently. We see things differently. We have different opinions. We all think we're right. Can I hear an amen? amen. I want you to see this in Genesis 1, verse 27. It says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Now watch, male and female, he created them. I don't know if you got this or not, but God created them male and female. And by the way, when I'm thinking about male, I'm thinking about Pastor Jonathan. Don't you appreciate your pastor? Isn't he great? I love him. He and Angela are the best. I mean, I've watched him since he was a little boy. And now look at him. Like to my son. My son's pastoring our church now, and I spanked his rear end. I can't tell you how many times. And now he spanks mine. He's my pastor. <laughs> Crazy stuff. I don't know. It's weird. God created them male and female. And I hope you get this because God made a distinction in the human race by creating us differently. They're, we're different. Men or women are different. I mean, they're similar in some things, but probably they're different in most. So I want to pray. I want to ask God to bless this message and open up your hearts to receive, and we're going to jump into this. Amen? Amen. Father, bless this word. We're praying, Lord, that you'll open up every single heart to receive the seed, that we can understand, Lord, how you've made us, that we might know how to cause love to bloom and have healthy, wonderful relationships and families and homes and marriages. So I ask you to touch this word in our hearts today in the name of Jesus. Amen and Amen. I think if you're going to have a healthy relationship, whether it is marriage, and by the way, if you're single, this is for you. If you're married, this is for you. If you're engaged, this is for you. If you're not certain about anything, this is for you. <laughs> because I, I want to talk about these differences that really sometimes separates. That's really the key problem in relationships is that we don't understand that God has made us differently. By the way, it was his fault. It was his idea to do this. That's why men don't do what women want us to do and why our wives or our, our, our girlfriends don't want to do what we want them to do. It's because we've been made so different. And the truth probably is this, is that we don't know why we do what we do. We don't know why we say what we say or act the way we act. But we do the things that we do, say, and act is because we're different. We're different. And I want to talk about First, in this message, before I jump into some points, I have some points, but I really felt like we ought to take a couple of minutes and talk about the differences and kind of unpackage this for just a few moments because men are complicated, and all the women said, Amen. and all the women are complex, and all the men were quiet. <laughs> right? Okay, just want to make sure. 
I've been married to someone of the opposite sex for over 40 years. She's right there. Jeannie, stand up and say hello to everybody. You can't be married for over 40 years and not learn something. So I'm going to take this service and I'm going to download for you everything I've learned in the next three minutes. You know, when we first got married, the first three years were of biblical proportions. It really was. It was like reading the Bible. There were wars and rumors of wars. <laughs> the next 37 years, though, I have to admit, the next 37 years have been like five minutes underwater. Uh, <laughs> Look, I'm going to give you men a tip. There's only, uh, there's only two times that a man does not understand a woman. That's before and after marriage. So I just want you to know that. And I still don't understand it all. I just know that we're different, and God wants us to celebrate some of those differences. Let me talk about that quickly. Because when it comes to men and women, we shop differently. Men don't shop, they hunt. Am I right? I mean, I go out there, I go and get it, I bag it, bring it home, clean it. I mean, I got it in the bag, you know. A woman will go, and she'll try on 45 pairs of shoes at DSW. Then she'll go to Dillard's or TJ Maxx or someplace, try on another 35, and then she goes all the way back to DSW and buy the first pair she tried on. <laughs> Ah. Jeannie said shopping. Jeannie doesn't ask me to shop with her. She says shopping with your husband is like a man hunting with a game warden. <laughs> I heard about a woman who wanted to go window shopping, and her husband said, well, you can go, but don't buy anything. And she goes, and she was window shopping, and she, uh, by the way, she came home a few hours later with a new dress. And her husband said, I thought I told you to look, but don't shop. She said, well, I saw this beautiful dress. I tried it on. And Satan said, you sure look good in that dress. <laughs> said, right then I told Satan, get behind me. <laughs> Satan got behind me. He says, and you look good from back there too. <laughs> God made them male and female. A few differences uh, let's talk about maturity. Women are really more mature than men. You can take a 17-year-old girl, and she can actually operate as an adult. You can take a 17-year-old male, and I mean, they're still giving each other wedgies in gym class, popping each other with towels. And this goes on until they're about 50 years old. <laughs> handwriting. Women's handwriting is different than men. Am I right? I mean, men just kind of scribble it out. They scratch it out. They, they don't decorate their penmanship. Women, they use Senate stationery. They make big loops in their G's and their P's, and they don't dot the I. They put hearts or little circles around it. You never find a man doing that. <laughs> Bathrooms were different. A man has six basic items in the bathroom. He has a razor. He has soap. He has shampoo. He has uh, shaving cream and toothpaste, and he has a towel from Holiday Inn. So he's got six basic things. <laughs> A woman has 437 things in the bathroom. I know. I went the other day and counted them, and I don't even know what most of them are for. <laughs> mirrors. We're different when it comes to mirrors. Men are vain. It's true. Men will get in front of a mirror, and they'll start. I'm not going to flex. I'll bust my jacket up. But... <laughs> But men, I mean, they, they kind of get in, they look at themselves. I don't care. I don't, they'd be 80 years old, I guarantee you. They, I'm, I'm a stud, man. I look good. <laughs> and I mean, they flex a little bit, and next thing you know, they're strutting off, you know, like a peacock. Women are no different, I guarantee you. Women are absolutely no different in that. Women check themselves out, too. They check out their reflections in anything shiny, like a mirror or a spoon <laughs> or the toaster. We're all the same, at least in that area, but we look at the, ourselves differently. You know, uh, arguments. Men argue different than women. This is no lie. I heard this three days ago. I heard somebody say that, that men, I mean, I'm sorry, that women and terrorists are different because you can negotiate with a terrorist. <laughs> I heard that. Men, I want to give you a tip on how to win an argument with your wife. Would you like to know how to win an argument with your wife? You bunch of wimps. Do you want to know how to, you want to, know how to win an argument? Beat your wife over the head with a mink coat. That's how you do it right there. <laughs> children. A woman knows everything about her children. Knows their birth dates. Knows the friends they hang out with. 
knows the dentist appointments, knows what their dreams and their fears and hopes and everything are. A man just knows that short people live in his house. That's the difference. <laughs> Women do laundry every few days. A man will wait weeks, months to do laundry. And he'll finally get all of his dirty clothes. He'll go to the laundromat, finally wash them. You know, men think they're going to see and meet beautiful women at a laundromat. This is a myth. How about men? men look, some men look good in mustaches, don't they? Tom Selleck, Burt Reynolds, Brad Pitt, Johnny Depp, George Clooney. No women look good in mustaches. I just want you to know that. <laughs> you know, without a clear awareness that there's differences between men and women, I know I've been kind of joking around here a little bit, but there's differences between men and women, the way we approach life. We're different. God made us. His fault. He's the one that made us male and female. If you can't discern those differences, if you can't figure out that God has made us to react different, talk different, you know, say things differently, you'll never have a happy relationship. You'll never have a You'll never be in a relationship where love begins to bloom. And so that's why I felt like it would be worthwhile to take a few minutes to talk about some of these differences. And, and if you don't understand them, you're going to be filled with resentment. You'll be uh, uh, demanding and judgmental. You become intolerant. And so for these next few minutes, as we wrap up the service here in about the next 20 minutes or so, I want to share with you four basic things that will help you to navigate these differences between men and women. Now, these are four things that are unchangeable. They've been this way, I think, since the beginning of time, but these are the four basic needs of men and women. And I want to start, first of all, with women. I want you to listen carefully. This is the first basic need of a man. A man needs to be admired. Now, I know some of you may have a hard time with that, but a man needs to be admired. Just as a woman needs the devotion of a man... Oh, a man needs the admiration of a woman. That's a basic need of men. Now, I don't know why that is, but God made us different. And that's the basic. Ladies, you got to get this because a man needs to be admired. Now, what does it mean to be admired? In the dictionary, it means to, to, to view or to regard someone with delight or with wonder or with approval. A man, I believe, feels admired when a woman is amazed at his unusual characteristics or his differences like his strength, or maybe his personality, or maybe uh, his kindness, or understanding, or his love, or whatever. But when she admires him for that, there's something that happens. There's a bond that takes place. And in many relationships, when, when you think it's going south or going sour, it's because the man does not feel admired. And let me give you a secret, ladies. A man will devote himself to the one who admires him. Let me say that again. A man will devote himself to the one who admires him. In other words, he's attracted to someone who admires him, but he's repelled by those who belittle him. And so if he comes home from work or whatever, and you're around and you're, you're speaking down to him, you're cutting him down all the time, I'll just tell you right now, he's going to reject you. It may not happen immediately, but I'll tell you, it won't take long, and that man will reject you. He's not going to hang around somebody that doesn't admire him. Now, I'm getting, look, this is, a, this is a romantic, this is a relationship tip that will save your marriage or at least create one that's healthy. Ladies, a man needs to be admired. I'll tell you, he'll find somebody who will admire him if you won't do it. That's the number one reason why men commit adultery. The number one reason. It's the reason why a guy dumps his girlfriend when the girlfriend thinks, I don't know why he dumped me. Everything to, seemed to be going okay. Well, you quit admiring him. You quit respecting him. Look, nothing destroys a man's ego more uh, or his desire to be with you more than being unappreciated and being disrespected. I mean, that just, re he, he rejects people like that. I'm, I'm sorry, men are egotistical. And I'm just telling you how men are. We're egotistical. I mean, it's a big deal about our egos. And you're the ones that can raise our ego. When a man's ego is busted, though, he's busted. The Bible teaches women to admire their husbands. In fact, 1 Peter 3 says, Sarah called Abraham Lord. Now, I'm not talking about she called him God, but it was a term of endearment is what it was. And it was a, it was a term of respect. And I know there's a lot of men here would love for you to call them Lord. 
<laughs> but guys, I have a tip for you. Guys, I want you to listen for just a minute, men. If you want respect and admiration, why don't you do something respectable and admirable? Maybe you'll get it then. Can I hear an amen from somebody out in the, in the house? In Ephesians 5, this is the Living Bible. I like how this reads. It says, so again I say, a man must love his wife and part, and as part of himself, and the wife must see to it that she deeply respects her husband, obeying, praising, and honoring him. To respect another person means you're going to attach a higher value to that person. That's really all that it means to respect another way. Now, ladies, the greatest way to show respect and admiration to your husband or girls, if you're dating, ladies, if you're dating, and the best way to do that is to tell them often how much they're appreciated. A man wants to just feel appreciated for what he does. When a man's thanked or admired or respected, I'll tell you right now, he'll move the world for you. You know, a man will become something when you begin to pat him on the back and say, you are something else. I can't believe how hard you work. It's amazing what that does to a man's ego. I mean, he throws his shoulder back and he's, what you want, honey? I'll get you whatever you want. I'm saying, that's, I mean, a man suddenly has purpose in his life. It's true. Here's the secret. Men will gravitate to those that admire him. So if you want him to grow closer to you, you want love to bloom, you want uh, him to love you more, then why don't you just admire him and respect him? Why don't you be thankful and show some appreciation? I'll tell you, he'll change. Okay, so that's the first tip. Let me show you the other tip. And there, I'm sharing these because we're different. So men and women have different needs. Men, listen to this. Women need to feel valued. If men need to be admired, women need to feel valued. Am I right, ladies? You need to feel like you're the most valuable thing on the earth. She needs to feel that you're more valuable than her mother or your mother. Uh, she needs to feel that you're more valuable than your hunting dog and your bass boat and your shotgun and your pickup truck and your ATV. Come on, ladies, help me. I drive a Ford F-350, four by four, four door, long bed diesel. That's a man's truck. <laughs> Jeannie told me, she says, you know, men that drive big trucks have an attitude. I said, what? I don't have no attitude. <laughs> but uh, somebody asked me about my truck one day and I said, man, I love my truck and I love my dog. And then I suddenly realized Jeannie was standing beside me and I'm telling you, it was a Holy Ghost moment. I put my arm around her. I said, I love my truck and I love my dog, but I adore my wife. Almost flew that into the ground. <laughs> Look, a woman needs to see and hear that you cherish her and you delight in her as a person. Amen. Now, for the sake of time this morning, I may not read all these verses, but you can read about this in John 4 because there's a story that I know you're very familiar with. It was the woman who came to the well and Jesus was at the well. Now, here's a woman who had five husbands and the one she was living with was not her husband. She'd been used and abused by men. She had been treated as an object. Every, every relationship she had had been sabotaged, ruined. She had messed up her life, her marriage, every relationship. None of the men understood her or cared. I mean, and the one that she was probably with now was going to probably dump her. She had only been valued for her superficial qualities in some particular way. But her life was instantly and totally changed when she came to the well, and there was Jesus right there. And he began to treat her and talk to her like a person, not like an object. He began to care about her well-being in her life and talked about her husbands and all these, have living water to give to you. And all Jesus did was treat her well, at least treat her with respect and treat her as if somebody cared for her. And I want to tell you, something instantly changed in her heart. Verse 28 and verse 29 of John chapter 4 said, the woman left her water pot right there, ran back to the city and said to the men, says, come see a man who told me all things that I ever did. Could this be the Christ? Her life changed because something changed in her. Somebody valued her for who she was as a person, not as an object. Now, men, if you want to have love blossom in a relationship, you've got to treat her as something incredibly valuable. Now, ladies, I have a tip for you. If you want to feel valued, why don't you do something that adds value to your life? Why don't you do something... Uh, that brings you value. Don't do things that causes you to lose value. 
Quit doing the things you said you would never do, but you do them anyway because you're afraid you're going to lose him. Ladies, if you're dating a man that's a loser, you need to lose him. If you're, if you're dating a man that treats you like trash, take him to the dump and dump him. I mean, it's human nature to throw away things that have no value. Isn't that right? Raise your value because, ladies, you're valuable. And the reason why many women end up just like the woman at the well with one ruined relationship after another, one marriage after another, one thing sabotaged after another is because they've lost their value. And with every bad relationship, they devalue themselves a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. And whatever loses value gets tossed away. It's thrown away. That's the reason why they have garage sales or yard sales. Really, it is because something has lost its value, has little to no value. So they put it out in the yard to get rid of it. You know the reason why trash is thrown away is because it has no value. Ladies, can I tell you right now, you aren't trash. I said you're not trash. You're valuable. You don't need somebody to pick you up on pennies on a dollar. I'm telling you, you're more valuable than that. Than that. Jesus said in Matthew 6, 21, he said, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And men, you can tell where your treasure is because your heart's going to follow it. And she feels valued when she sees you making an investment in her. Now, how do you make an investment in her? You got to communicate. You must communicate. I mean, women talk a lot. I, ladies, I'm sorry, but you talk more than men. I've got a four and a half year old granddaughter. Can I tell you, that girl can go. I mean, when she walks through that door, it is nonstop. She speaks 300 words a minute with gusts of 600 words a minute. I mean, it's nonstop. I got a, I've got a grandson. He's two and a half. And he's talking really well, but he just plays with his trucks. Oh, God, thank you. <laughs> but men, talk to your wives better, too than, uh, better that she talks to you than about you. But if she doesn't sense that you're... That, you're, that she's number one in your life, you're going to crush her self-worth and her value. Let me say it again. If, if, if she doesn't sense that uh, she's number one in your life, you crush her value and her self-worth. She's got to know that her man values her. That's an important thing for a woman. If she doesn't sense that you value her, she will reject you. Men, do you feel rejected? Feel like you're getting no love at home? You know what? It may not be her fault. It may be your fault because you're not valuing her. I heard it said before, if you treat, if you treat your wife like a thoroughbred, you'll never have an old nag. <laughs> if the queen bee ain't happy, you get no honey. <laughs> Women have radar. They can tell whether or not you're, that, uh, whether they're your treasure or not. They know. They know. They know. She'll know if your heart is filled with her. And if you treat her carelessly, she knows she's not your treasure. She's your trash. Think about that. Third thing, ladies, listen, this is a tip for you about men. Men need to be loved and accepted for who they are. Men need to be loved and accepted for who they are. This is just a fact when it comes to relationships and the differences in men and women. God made us male and female. But most women don't accept their man. They try to improve him. Can I tell you something about a man who, who a woman tries to improve all the time? He rejects it. You know the reason why? Because it signals to him that there's something wrong with him. That there's something. Bro I told you men are egotistical. So when a woman is always trying to fix him, always trying to change him, he feels like there's something broken in his life. Can I tell you what he does? He starts to resist. You wonder why there's no love in your relationship? Well, you're, not, you're trying to fix something, and it probably needs to be fixed. But he's rejecting you because he senses something's wrong and something's broken in his life. And it hurts his ego and it makes him defensive and he doesn't want to talk. But ladies, if you will admire him, if you will respect him, can I tell you what will happen? He will want to improve. He will want to change. He wants to make his woman happy. I know it doesn't make sense to you, but that's true. The number one greatest need, I believe, of a man is to have the love of his wife. When he comes home from work or wherever it is, I mean, he expects his wife to acknowledge and appreciate his effort. That doesn't happen in many homes around America anymore. It's true. And when his hard work goes unnoticed, he slowly quits protecting her. 
and being tender to her and being passionate and desiring to please her. All those things are snuffed out. Am I making sense today? I just want to make sure I'm tracking here right. Ladies, your happiness signals to him that he's loved. You say, well, I know. I tell him all the time I'm loved. But see, when you're happy, it does something to a man. It tells him that he's loved. If you're not happy, he feels like a failure. And he will eventually give up trying to fulfill you. Look, this is the greatest desire. The greatest, a man's greatest desire is to make you happy. And the greatest need is to be loved. That's a man. His greatest desire is to make you happy. His greatest need is to be loved. Ladies, I'm just telling you about men. And if you're not happy, he never feels your love. Because he, he equates your happiness with love. And your love gives him security. And when I know that I've done something for, for Jeannie, when I've done things for her and it goes unnoticed and unappreciated, uh, I mean, I, I wonder why am I doing this? But when she says something about what I've done, it boosts my ego. Look, I know I'm supposed to take the garbage out. But when I do, sometimes I like her to say, man, I'm so glad you take the garbage out. <laughs> now, women don't necessarily need you know, that to happen. But for us men, that's a big deal. It's a big deal. I feel loved. You think about David and his wife, Michael, you know, Saul's daughter. He was bringing the Ark of the Covenant back into, um, into Jerusalem. And the Bible says, I'll just read it to you, 1 Samuel 6. And in verse 16, it says, Now the Ark of the Lord came into the city of David. Michael, Saul's daughter, looked through the window and saw David leaping and whirling before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart. And then in verse 20, it jumps down. Then David returned to, to bless his household. I like that, what it says. He came to bless his household to say, can you see what happened? Man, this is unbelievable. And Michael, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, how glorious was the king today. I mean, uncovering himself today in the eyes of the maids and of his servants as one of the base fellows shamelessly uncovers himself. I mean, she just, she just cut him down. You know, in verse 23, it says, she was barren from that day for she had no children. You know, I mean, think about this. She came from wealth, aristocracy. She came from a, a refined home. David was a country boy, a shepherd. He was earthy. There was a difference between those two people. But she resented the way he was acting and behaving. She just couldn't accept it. So she mocked him, called him names, and made it clear to David. And you know what David did? David resisted. David resented her, and she die, died childless. You know, that doesn't sound like a, a happy ending to a marriage, does it? Men need to be loved and accepted. Last one, number four. Men, listen to this. Women want to be secure. This is a relationship tip. God made us different. Women need to be secure. In Genesis three thirteen, look at this. To the woman, God said... I will greatly multiply your sorrows and your conception. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. Now, this verse is not talking about men dominating over women. That has nothing to do with that. But it's saying everything that her desire will be for her husband. It's not about inferiority. So, ladies, don't get the wrong idea here. It's about, about how you will draw your security from a man. That's how God made you. God did not make a man to dominate over you, but to love you as Christ loved the church. Right? The Bible says her desire will be for her husband. That means that she is going to be looking. In other words, God gave uh, this, this different thing in a woman that, that her desire would be for security. She would look for, to, to this man for this security. doesn't mean you're weak. Let me give you an idea about security. Uh, Jeannie and I have had horses for many years. We like horses and things. And we have a couple in our church named Gordon and Blue. And they've been in our church almost from the very beginning, almost from the first day we started 29 years ago. And, uh, and so we would take horse pack trips up in the mountains. And, uh, I mean, go miles and miles back up in the mountains where we don't see people for a week. It's wonderful. And so we were going into this wilderness area. I called the ranger station to find out what the conditions were on the trails and that kind of thing. And the ranger informed me that the area we were going with has a lot of bears and that we need to bear-proof our camp. I got pretty darn excited about that bears. Man, that's awesome. We're going to see some bears out in the wilderness. Because, you know, you only see bears in a zoo. You know, I, 
I've been to the, the Denver has a huge zoo. I've been to the Baton Rouge Zoo. You know, in the Denver Zoo, they have the name of the animal and the Latin name underneath it. In the Baton Rouge Zoo, they have the, the name of the animal and they have a recipe underneath it. <laughs> That's the difference between Colorado and Louisiana. And so I'm pretty excited about the bear thing. So I come home and say, Jeannie, you're not going to believe this, man. The ranger said there's going to be bears there. And I mean, the look on her face changed, and she thought she wasn't sure if she wanted to go. She was just really uncertain. And, and, and she said, aren't you concerned? And I'm thinking, no, I'm not concerned. I carry a gun when I go places like that. No, I'm not worried about all that. So anyway, we pack up in the mountains. We finally get to where we're going. We set up camp. It's late in the evening now, and I'm tired. We finally go to bed. And Jeannie had seen my pistol in the saddlebag. She said, aren't you going to bring that in? I said, no, I don't need to bring that. I said, the horses, with the horses here, it's not going to be a problem. And I mean, I went fast to sleep. During the middle of the night, I was awakened by, Michael, Michael, are you awake? Michael, are you awake? I mean, how could I not be awake? She had her arms around my, her hands around my arm like a tourniquet, digging her fingernails in here. She says, I heard something. There's something out to the left. I think it's a bear. And I listened. I couldn't hear anything. But she was squeezing so hard, my heart started to pump. I thought my arm was going to fall off. And then suddenly I heard a grunting sound. She said, I think it's a bear. I I mean, fear was in her voice. And I waited and I listened. And I suddenly recognized what kind of animal it was. It was Gordon in the tent next door to us snoring is what it was. No lie. That's a true story. Jeannie got scared because I didn't make her secure. It wasn't her fault. It was my fault. My sensitivity radar was turned off like most men's. I need to get that fixed again, I think. (laughs) But there's something in a woman that causes her to have a desire for security. It's kind of like money. You know, men, men don't worry about money that much. Women do. I mean, we don't have money as men. We just think, well, I'll get it when I need it, you know. But a woman wants to make sure she has Money to put shoes on the kids, buy groceries, make sure the rent's paid, all that kind of stuff. It gives her security. You know what? We'd been married for a few years, but about 35 years ago, if I look backwards, things were tight for us. I'm sure you've been the same place. I mean, I'll just tell you up front, we were poor. Can I tell you something good about being poor? It doesn't cost much. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> We can hardly pay the bills. And I'm telling you, Jeannie felt insecure. And I discovered 35 years ago that if I could find a way in the money department to show her everything's fine, I'm telling you, peace began to settle over her and faith began to rise in her. It's tremendous. It's like Jesus. The last promise he made is he said, I'm going to prepare a place for you, a mansion. Remember what he said? A place where there's no more crying, dying, sighing, no more tears, no more sorrow, no more past. He said, I'm going to prepare. Why did he tell us that? The bride? Because he wanted us to feel secure. He wanted us to know we have a place, a place in eternity where we'd be forever, where there's security, where there's peace. Men, a woman needs you to create an atmosphere. Everything happens in an atmosphere. She needs you to create an atmosphere of love and grace and encouragement and value because what you value, you secure. And when a woman feels secure, she bonds. Four things that will help you to see love blossom, your marriage grow, a relationship grow. When you begin to see the difference between men and women and you can respond to those in the right way, God does something supernatural. I want you to close your eyes for just a moment. Let me ask those of you here today, how many of you would say, my relationship is not as good as it needs to be? Would you just slip your hand up and you can put it right back down? Now, be honest with God. You're in church, so don't lie to God. Amen. There's hands everywhere. Some of you need to lift your hand and and say, I need my relationship healed. I need it restored. There's some things that are broken in my life. Some of you have broken dreams, broken vows broken lives. Some of you feel unappreciated. If that's you, slip your hand up. Men, if you feel undervalued, slip your hand up. If you feel disrespected, say, Lord, I feel this way. That's why I resent my wife. That's why I resent my girlfriend. I don't feel like 
they're thankful for the things that I do for them. Ladies, maybe you feel like uh, you've not been valued in any way. If that's you, slip your hand up. You feel like you're just, been, he's been treating you like trash. But you need God to do something for you today. You feel insecure. Slip your hand up. Say, God, that's me. Amen. Before I take one more step and pray for you. Listen, you'll never be able to repair these horizontal relationships till you have the vertical one figured out. In other words, you need to get your relationship right with God first before you can ever get your relationship right with somebody else. There could be somebody here today, you're not right with God, and you know you're not right with God. You've messed up. You have mismanaged your life. Some of you need to hang a new sign on your life saying, under new management. You need to give your heart and life to Jesus Christ this morning, who will come and heal you and deliver you and free you and repair you and touch you and deliver you. Is that someone here today? Step your hand up and say, Pastor, I need to get right with God. I need to give my heart back. Come on, slip your hand up and say, that's me. Amen, amen, amen. Anyone else? Amen. Thank you, dear sister. There's another one and another one. Heavenly Father, in this sanctuary, men and women, Lord, we're here. We're having a great time. We love you. But Lord, these who've just lifted their hands are saying, I'm not sure I'm really right with you. I'm not sure I'm serving you. I've been living wrong. I'm filled with shame and guilt. I feel condemnation. And today, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to forgive me. I come to you, Lord, with my arms open. And I want you to heal my heart. Wash away my past and make me a new creature again. Lord, I thank you that today I get to start fresh and new. Lord, I want that relationship right with you so that it blossoms and blooms. And then, Lord, I pray for those who just lifted their hands that feel like they need to have their relationship repaired with someone. They feel undervalued, disrespected, not valued, insecure. And Lord, there are men and women like that in this sanctuary. I pray and ask you right now by the power of your Holy Spirit, reach down out of heaven, back into creation, and touch every one of these men and women in Jesus' name. Begin to let them sense the love of God and the love of that person, Lord, in their heart. In the name of Jesus, thank you for it, Lord. You're well able to do these mighty things. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Praise God. Somebody put your hands together. Let's give God a good offering of praise. Amen. Thanks for joining us today for Bethany's weekend experience. We hope that you were encouraged and challenged during the message. If you made a decision to follow Christ, or maybe you've rededicated your life to the Lord, we want to encourage you to tell someone about it. Tell your family, a friend, and feel free to tell us about it by clicking on the Talk About It button on our homepage. If you need prayer for anything else, just go to our homepage and click the Request Prayer button. We'd love to have you join us or come visit one of our three campuses for a live worship experience. We hope you have a great day and we'll see you next time.